Today on Forbes, meet the new biotech billionaire putting pig hearts in humans. In 1996, Martine Rothblatt's six-year-old daughter was diagnosed with pulmonary arterial hypertension, a rare lung and heart disease without a cure. Undeterred, Rothblatt, a co-founder of Sirius Satellite Radio, launched her own biotech firm with the goal of finding one. Nearly three decades later, Rothblatt's daughter is healthy and in her 30s. Meanwhile, shares of the now publicly traded firm, United Therapeutics, are up 54 times its price at its 1999 IPO. This year alone, shares have surged, up 50% so far in 2024 and up 40% since April 30th, enough to make Rothblatt the world's newest billionaire. The Silver Spring, Maryland-based business generated $2.1 billion in sales last year, largely from selling five FDA-approved drugs to help people like Rothblatt's daughter treat pulmonary arterial hypertension, or PAH. Investors have been cheering on United Therapeutics since it announced a $1 billion accelerated stock repurchase program in March, signaling it's bullish about its pulmonary hypertension drugs. Also driving up the stock is excitement over the 41% year-over-year jump in revenue from its star drug, Teveso. Rothblatt, who is 69 years old, has led the now $14.7 billion market capitalization firm as CEO since she founded it. She has also been instrumental in helping push its subsidiary, Revivacor, into xenotransplantation, specifically manufacturing pig organs to transplant into humans with end-stage renal and cardiac diseases. Joseph Tomey, senior research analyst at TD Cowan, says, quote, There are tons of people on the waiting list for kidneys and hearts. They're willing to capitalize on it. No one has benefited more financially from United Therapeutics' success than Rothblatt, who has long been one of America's wealthiest self-made women. Forbes pegged her net worth at $390 million in 2015, after the company found a successful treatment for PAH with Arenatram, which is Martine Rowe spelled backwards. By 2021, with United Therapeutics' stock on the rise, Rothblatt was worth some $585 million. Now, given her 650,000 shares, plus options to acquire even more stock, cash accumulated over her decades in business, and houses in several states, Forbes estimates Rothblatt's net worth has hit the $1 billion mark, making her one of just 35 self-made women billionaires in America. It's been a winding path to the Three Comma Club for Rothblatt. Born in San Diego in 1954, she hitchhiked the country playing music. She plays the piano, flute, and drums, while studying communications at UCLA. A tour of a satellite facility in the Seychelles left her fascinated with the idea of using satellite networks to beam music to listeners around the world. After returning to the U.S., she got a joint law degree and MBA from UCLA, and eventually took a gig as a telecommunications lawyer for a firm in Washington, D.C. She co-founded Sirius Satellite Radio in 1990, helping to pioneer satellite-to-car broadcasting, and led its 1993 IPO. Three years later, doctors said her daughter had pulmonary arterial hypertension, or PAH, which at the time had a high mortality rate within two years of diagnosis. As many as 50,000 people in the U.S. have PAH, a progressive disease where abnormally high blood pressure affects the arteries in the lungs and heart. Rothblatt sold $3 million worth of Sirius XM stock and gave the money to doctors to come up with a treatment. When that didn't work, she launched a company of her own, United Therapeutics, to find a cure. She took it public in 1999 in what was a $66 million IPO of a tiny biotech firm with $54,000 in revenue earned under an orphan drug grant from the FDA. In 2011, Rothblatt steered into supplying lungs for organ transplants. United Therapeutics acquired xenotransplantation tech firm Revivacor, which created the first cloned mammal, Dolly the sheep, to develop organs raised in pigs. In 2022 and 2023, United Therapeutics led two successful transplants of hearts grown in genetically altered pigs. It announced the first successful transplant of one of their pig kidneys into a living human in April, and is spending $100 million on a new facility to further study the viability of xenotransplantation. For full coverage, check out Richard J. Chang's piece on Forbes.com. This is Kieran Meadows from Forbes. Thanks for tuning in.